Hello and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Cooler Master Mobius ARGB 120mm class fan. This is part of my redone series where I redid all of my noise testing analysis on all of my fans. First up, in cooler testing noise normalized, the Mobius 120p ARGB was originally ranked first. It is now ranked second and you can see the RPMs that it's running at for each of the tests. Uh, in the cooler test, 100% PEW fan signaling, the Mobius 120p ARGB was ranked 9th and retains that position. Cooler testing value proposition, the Mobius 120p was ranked 21st, it is now ranked 31st, so an overall drop in position there. Uh, cooler value proposition, 100% PW fan signaling, it was ranked 41st and retains that position. Uh, CFM testing, noise normalized, it was ranked 4th, it is now ranked 5th, so a small drop in position. Uh, at 100% PW and fan signaling, it retains its position at 12th. CFM value proposition, noise normalized, it was ranked 21st, it is now ranked 33rd, a drop in position. Uh, for CFM, 100% PW and fan signaling, value proposition, it was ranked 40, 41st, and it retains that position. Uh, K simulation test, 6 inch mark, noise normalized, it was ranked 4th, it is now ranked 10th, so pretty big drop in position on that test. And the 11 inch mark, noise normalized, case simulation test, it was ranked first, it is now ranked third. So actually retaining a pretty high position, but it's overall in loss. Uh, value proposition, 6 inch mark, case simulation test, it was ranked 24th, it is now ranked 33rd. The 11 inch mark and the case simulation test, it was ranked 12th, it is now ranked 21st. So first up with the specific graphs is my case simulation test. Uh, this case, uh, test can be looked at in a couple key different ways, but the most important for you, the viewer, is going to be what size case do you actually plan on buying or using this fan in? So I took it at several key data points that are representative of the majority of fans in each size category. The first is the 6 inch mark. The 6 inch mark is representative of a short throw distance. For example, putting your fans at the bottom of your case and blowing it towards your GPU, that would be an example of a short throw distance. Uh, it would also be representative of a small form factor case that is still a front to back airflow design. So think micro ATX, but still big enough to hold a uh, air cooler that sticks out into the airstream. Not the ultra compact ones like the Fractal Design Terra. The nine inch mark is representative of a compact tower. Now I can't think of any uh, specific models, but basically it'd be like a Dell Optiplex. So think a case that is just big enough to hold a graphics card the length of a standard ATX motherboard. That'd be about that nine inch mark. Uh, then we have the 11 inch mark. The 11 inch mark is representative of a mid tower case. And then we have the 14.5 inch mark and that is representative of large towers, something like the Fractal Design Torrent or other truly big cases. So these data points are from the front of the case to that air cooler position. So that's where I created my control fan and compared against a few other fans that I felt were kind of applicable to it. So my control fan is three parts A12X25 to one part A14. The A12X25 uh, is an excellent 120mm class fan, while the A14 is a 140mm class fan that is also quite excellent. Now, 140s tend to do better at the 11 inch mark and 14.5 inch mark. Well, I've seen uh, mostly in a trend that 120mm class fans do better at the 6 and 9 inch mark. So blending the two fans together to create my composite 130mm class fan kind of gives you the best of both worlds but um, not really excelling in either. So it just gives a good base point to say, hey, I need a fan to, to generically say, this is a what I would consider a good fan beating it, means that it's a better fan losing to it, means that they're not necessarily terrible, but probably okay. And if they're too off it, I can uh, definitively say terrible fan. So we have the uh, Mobius in here in purple. And it is sitting in that excellent category. It is beating out my uh, control fan, uh, not by a huge amount, but certainly by a little bit, and especially at the 14.5 inch mark, it is doing an excellent job there. While the Master Fan SF120P here in green is pretty terrible, and the Master Fan SF120M ARGB is also not doing very well there. Um, I have a review of this fan up on my channel, or I think it'll be up on this, my channel uh, before this one. And uh, I think I got a lemon. I just have some concerns about Cooler Master's quality control with these fans. At 100% PEW fan, and fan signaling, the Mobius is kicking butt. I mean, look at its positioning. It is doing an excellent job uh, just outperforming my control fan. The now, how does it compare against 
a whole bunch of other fans. So then we have like towards the top of the graphs, this purple line is the gentle typhoon. And you can trace these lines and see how uh, each of them kind of drops off. And then I labeled the P12 in here because its uh, line is sort of hidden. It's this orange line. It's hidden by a bunch of other fans, but I want to highlight it because it's sitting right here at the six inch mark. So the Mobius 120P is sitting right here. It is right towards the top of the graphs. It is in an excellent position. And as a case fan, it's looking very good. And I did measure things at 100% PWM fan signaling. The Mobius 120P is sitting in excellent position. The only fans that are reading it out are spinning, well, not that much higher because here's the General Typhoon. But generally speaking, are spinning at a higher RPM. So that means that the Mobius is actually a very efficient design in this sort of application. Next, we have noise testing. And the Mobius we see is sitting right here, right towards the top of the graphs, not at the very tippy top, especially at higher RPMs, but it's, I'd, I'd still call it excellent, quite excellent. Uh, do have con some concerns about uh, Cooler Master's quality control based on another review, but if you can get a golden, maybe not even a golden sample, an average sample, uh, it's, looking, it's looking really good. Next, we have CPU air cooler testing. Uh, we have the two graphs, and both these graphs, the better uh, position is to be top left, worse is bottom right. And first on the left side is RPM versus airspeed. This is essentially a blade efficiency graph. It is how good is this blade design at pushing air through my CPU air cooler, the Noctua U12A. So the uh, uh, control fan is sitting here in this blue line. We get the Mobius ARGB in a teal line sitting right here. I'm now drawing it out. So right away, what do we see? The Mobius is actually sitting towards the top. Like, I mean, even compared to its brethren from Cooler Master, it's sitting right up there. So it is considered their next generation design, and it's really showing. Next, on the right side, we are taking a look at noise versus airspeed. Noise versus airspeed is a efficiency of how quiet is this fan in its operational range and once we get again we see that the mobius is sitting right towards the top of the graph it is in an excellent position overall now how does it compare against a majority of my subsample selection of other fans now this isn't all of them but it is like a bunch of top performers a bunch of middle performers a bunch of bottom performers just so you can see how it overall positions itself. If you want to know the rank, go back to the uh, beginning of the video. Let's say you have the uh, Storm T3120 hooked up to your CPU or cooler or radiator, whatever. For my noise level, um, noise normalized level, it's only pushing 0.8 meters per second of air. Relatively speaking, uh, the value differs based on the cooler, radiator, i.e. design. But if you upgrade to the Mobius 120P, it'll now have a significant improvement in performance, meaning it's pushing more air through that device. Thus, if you have an unlocked CPU, you're going to be able to draw a higher wattage for the same noise level, or if you have a locked CPU or have limited your clock speed in some way, then your computer will one cooler not verify what sort of wattage improvement you'll get because every cooler is different and I haven't done enough testing with regard to that. But what I can attest for is that you would see some improvement. At 100% PWM fan signal, we see that the Mobius 120P is still right up towards the top of the graph. It is a little bit on the noisy side compared to other uh, 2,300, 2,400 RPM fans, but it's not significantly noisier. Um, so I'd still overall call it a very good category, and it certainly is outperforming the A12X25 due to its extra RPMs. You get an extra 19, 20, 21, 22, uh, 0.3 meters per second of air, which may not sound like a lot, but on my cooler, that would give you almost 10 watts, 15 watts of extra wattage going through your CPU. So it's up to you to determine how much, how much extra cooling is actually worth it to you. I cannot make that decision for you. That is all up to you. Now we're on to airspeed versus decibels. Airspeed is vertical, decibels is horizontal, and we see that the Mobius 120P is sitting uh, right up towards the middle top of what I consider good fans. And all these fans on the graph are what I consider good fans, so it's just a way to directly relate them to each other. 
So being sitting in the middle is definitely a great position to be in, so it's definitely doing very well for itself here. Now we're on to CFM testing. Now CFM testing, as done by most other viewers, I do not like, and I think it's fundamentally wrong. I'm looking at you, hard work Canucks. All right, I apologize for that. I did have to do an emergency graph upgrade during, uh, well, the recording of this video, and I forgot to add the Mobius to it. It happens. But the point is that we acknowledge our mistakes and we move on. And we see that the Mobius and the control fan line up almost perfectly. And in the noise graph, we see that the control fan is slightly better than the Mobius at higher RPMs, but not as good at lower RPMs. So again, better fans top left, worse fans bottom right. Now, how does the Mobius compare against other fans? Well, first, noise normalized testing. The Mobius is sitting right up at the top. It's doing really well. It's just a hair below the A12X25. But how about at 100% PWM fan signaling? Well, it's also doing quite well there. The A12X25 is right here, still in an excellent position. So the Mobius is once again proving to be a excellent fan in this type of test. Then we have the noise uh, versus airspeed. Airspeed is in CFM here. And the Mobius is sitting right in the middle of the pack. But as we see higher RPMs hit, it tends to drop away from the best fans. But it's still in the very good category. I just want to make that perfectly clear. Now we're on to value proposition. First, the Mobius 120p is a $35 fan based off of standard retail pricing that I could find off of Amazon. As prices of fans do change, uh, the value proposition does change, so I encourage you to redo the calculations. Unfortunately, it's out, outside of my capability to recalculate all the time. So I just it, based it off of standard retail pricing that I could find. So $35 is on the expensive side for a fan, and this doesn't take into things like RGB. So right away, we can see that the Mobius P is pretty much bog in the middle of the graph. Like, at 0 0.5, 0 0.6, I would consider that just middle of the rows in terms of value proposition. It's not good, it's not bad, it's basically just in there as average. Uh, the TLG12 is what I consider truly an excellent value. So that's where these spikes are. Mm. And then we have the 100% PWM fan signal at the 6 inch mark, and we see that the Mobius 120p ARGB is sitting, once again, kind of bottom middle in terms of that. At the 11 inch mark, it's it's a little bit over average, but not an exceptionally large amount, but it's still, it's not a terrible value, it's just that it's not a good value. So if you're looking at RGB, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to weigh that factor in, and that's where it's up to you to decide what's most important. At 100 cent PW fan signal, it's a little bit better than average, but not by much. So take that for what you will. Moving on to through the CPU air cooler, basically average again at 100%, average value proposition, CFM testing, average, so, so if you're looking at the value of this fan, it's average, it is average value, and this is the difference between value proposition, so what is its uh, performance per dollar versus its um, actual like performance. So its actual performance was really quite good right towards the top of the graphs. It's just that for its actual cost to purchase this fan, it completely negates it and makes it just middle of the roads. So it's up to you to decide if you want that extra overhead in performance as well as like in the RGB, because not everybody does. Um, it would be a good pick, but if you're looking for a best bang for your buck, even for like the performance level that was achieved, it's not this fan. So at the end of every video, I do like to show off my raw data. This data does belong to me. I'm the one who generated it, so it does belong to me and my channel. If you would like to use this data for your own personal use, meaning you're going to type it out into Excel and use it to generate your own graphs for your own personal use, you may go ahead and do so. But I do ask that if you're going to use any sort of video, publication, or journal, you reference me and my channel because, well, I worked long and hard to get this data out here. I could have just saved this all for myself. Uh, I am an aerospace engineer. This is a fundamental interest of mine. And that's why I decided to do this type of video and do a lot of this type of video because I wanted to know what fan really was out there. And I wasn't happy with how anybody else was doing it. 
and those big channels were taking too long to get their testing up and running and none of them are aerospace engineers. So every fan takes me around an hour and a half to two hours just to do the testing. And then it takes time to do all the pretty stuff, updating the graphs, updating this chart, recalculating stuff, uh, then narrowing the charts for the graph view, uh, creating the PowerPoint presentation for for the for the video review and stuff, and then recording it. It's just it's a lot of extra stuff. So if you like what I'm doing, please let me know how I'm doing. If uh, you got constructive criticism for me on how I can improve these videos so that they're more entertaining to watch, please leave it down below. I really do pay attention to it, and I try to make improvements over time. Uh, just note it may take a little bit of time for me to roll improvements because I tend to do a lot of testing all at once and then a lot of video, videoing a lot at run, a lot at once. So there's some delay in terms of, hey, this can improve your videos. To hey, I rolled it out into my videos. If you got a particular fan you want me to test in the future, please leave it in the comment section down below. I do read it and I do try to acquire it. I do need it basically available on Amazon in order for to make the purchases. Um. So if it's, it's not available there, I'm not sure I'll be able to acquire it. Uh, other than that, I don't know. Subscribe. Check out my Patreon. It would really help me get to that next level that I talked about at the beginning of this video to acquire all the new equipment that I would like to be able to purchase for this channel to, to compete with those big channels that have basically unlimited budget. Uh, anyways, thank you very much. Have a great day, and I hope to see you next time on Computer Tech and More.